Hey, Sue here. Um, today I thought I'd do a video um, that I've been going to do for a while, talking about my history and how I have come to go from meat eater to vegan uh, 20 odd years ago and now right around to carnivore. So if that interests you, don't go away. Hi there, I'm Sue. If you're new to my channel, make sure to like and subscribe um, and share with anybody you think might be interested. So I thought today that I would talk about my history um, because it's not something I've gone into a whole lot um, with the discussion around this um, carnival diet. So my, my, I don't want to make this too long, but it's probably going to take a little bit to kind of explain where I've been and how I've come to get here. Um, I grew up in a family where my dad was heading into a vegetarian diet. So my dad was playing with vegetarianism when I was quite a young child. He used to try and feed us things like nut meat. And, um, <laughs> and then he became a vegetarian and he has been vegetarian for many, many years. He's almost 90 now. He's uh, actually pescatarian now because he eats fish because he came to realise that he needed um, more protein than what he was getting as he got older um, and has been trying to resolve a few little health issues. Um, but he was a big influence on me and the way that I thought about food. So I remember like as a kid standing there doing the do doing dishes with dad, you know, he was obviously washing them and I was drying them or something. And he was telling me how you could see the, the what fat and animal fat did in your body because of the way it was in the pots and how much easier they were to clean when they'd had vegetables cooking in them. And that seemed like a fairly compelling argument in my probably 10, 11, 12 year old brain. Um, and so yeah, he had a big influence on the way that I thought about food. So even as a teenager, there was a few times that I kind of played around with vegetarian diet. And then I kind of forgot about it for a while as a young mum. And then when I, by the time I got into my mid to late 20s, so we moved to Australia when I was 25, the first year over there wasn't too bad and then after that I got into a whole world of uh, trouble with my health. So I, before we left New Zealand I had a lot of issues with my digestive system. I had issues with my digestive system right from, the, uh, from when I was a child um, and was always back and forth to the doctors with tummy aches and all that sort of thing. And then when I had my daughter I started that ramped up, it got way worse uh, when she was a baby and so I was kind of in and out of hospital, off to A&E all the time with abdominal pain and all this, all this stuff going on. And they never really worked out what was going on. Um, I ended up on a drug called Tagamet for a couple of years before we went to Australia and then stopped taking that not long after we got to Australia. And that was when I got interested in herbs because my grandmother had told me I should be taking Slippery Elm. And I kind of poo-pooed the idea, but once I stopped taking the Tagamet, um, all my symptoms came back and so I went looking for um, Slippery Elm in North Queensland in 1990, which was a bit of a challenge, but I found it and it helped. So that kind of set me on a path to looking at herbs um, and also set me on a journey within myself where I had less and less faith in modern medicine, basically, uh, to the point where I really just stopped going to doctors. And so between the ages of 26, I guess, and 30, um, as I said, I got myself into quite a bad place with my health. I was weighing in at around 120 kilos, probably. Um, not exactly sure how high I got because I gave up weighing myself. Um, and I was a smoker. And I got to the point where I was so unhealthy that I had to go to bed. I'd go to bed at seven o'clock at night because I couldn't breathe anymore. Um, my, my chest would just get so tight and if I couldn't, I couldn't smoke. And if I couldn't smoke, I couldn't stay up. So I'd just go to bed. Um, I bought myself a push bike when I was 29, I think. And my daughter and I decided to go for a ride down the road. She was a young teenager at that stage. Um, and I could pedal about six times and then I'd have to coast because my legs would just 
be worn out and I was so incredibly unfit. Um, I remember my daughter said to me, do you think you'll ever be able to ride into town, mum? And I said, I don't know, I don't know. So I went home and I put the bush bike away and I stayed away until I quit smoking. Um, at that point as well, I was suffering really badly with anxiety and um, panic attacks. I was pretty much agoraphobic. I stopped driving uh, for five years. I didn't drive the car unless I really had to. If my husband had been drinking, I would drive home. But that was the only time that I drove. Um, I, what else was going on with me? I, um, yeah, I was having panic attacks and stuff. And basically, um, agoraphobic. I didn't want to go out. I would have real fear about going out anywhere. If we went into town, um, I would get my husband to go out and get stuff at the shops and that because I didn't want to go in there. If I did have to go in and do stuff, I remember like standing in queues in the bank. And we didn't have big queues. I was only in a little wee tiny town in Australia. Um, but, you know, there might be one or two people in front of me. And I remember standing there just panicking, wanting to just run. But I couldn't because I had to keep going. And I'd kind of suffered a bit with that when I split up with my daughter's father as well. But because I had my daughter, I had to go out and do the shopping. I was a single mum at that stage and I had to go out and do stuff. So I made myself. And this is basically where I was then as well. If I had to do it, I would do it. But um, it was incredibly hard and incredibly uncomfortable. So then I finally, I quit smoking not long after I turned 30. Um, I just got to the point, I was sitting there one night, I was just sick of myself. And I thought I need to stop smoking, otherwise I'm going to die. And my kids are going to be left to fend for themselves, basically. Um, so... I handed my husband the cigarettes one night and I said to him, that's it, I'm not smoking anymore. And he just laughed because he didn't think I would do it because we both talked about quitting and tried to quit, tried to quit and lots of times. Um, but that was it. I handed him the cigarettes and I made the decision that night that I wasn't going to smoke anymore. So within 24 hours, my health, my whole everything about me just changed. Um, not my appearance, obviously. But inside me, the change was massive. Um, and I could breathe and I felt like I was alive. It felt like, I remember reading a book by Alan Carr about smoking and he said it's like going from the grey, grey overcast low sky into bright blue sunshine. And that's, that's what it was like. It was like the colour came back into my life just within 24 to 48 hours without those cigarettes. And so I started exercising. I started, we were living in a caravan on our five acre block, building our house at that stage. And I started, we had no power, um, apart from we might have had a solar panel at that stage, I think, and one, one battery. And we had a little 12 volt black and white TV and we had an old video recorder. Um, uh, the, I can't remember what they were called. They were the ones that weren't very popular. Um, and we had one of those, which we had got to get the channels on the TV. And so I started recording aerobics old style shows on TV and using those um, and exercising in our little awning uh, or annex, whatever you want to call it, in the caravan. I'd, I'd do aerobics on there. So that was my kind of turnaround with my health. And from there, I started walking and then I started doing aqua aerobics and riding my push bike and doing weight training and all that stuff. And I actually dropped uh, 40, about 45 kilos over four years and got really fit. And But I was uh, basically a exercise junkie. So I'd, I'd dropped the cigarettes, I took up drinking and, and I took up exercise. And so I'd exercise like a maniac uh, four or five hours a day often for quite a lot of years. Um, and that was how I lost my weight. And then gradually, I started to change my diet. So I started to change back towards vegetarian diet. Then um, my friend gave me a book. So I had dropped about 30 kilos by the stage. I was 34. And I'd been over here to New Zealand on holiday, came back to Australia. And my friend who had, she'd had rheumatoid arthritis since she was 18. She lent me a book uh, called Ross Horn. Uh, the, it was by Ross Horn called The Pritikin 
you can do better. And so Ross Horn had been the spokesman for the Pritikin diet in Australia, and then he had uh, eventually become a fruitarian. And so that's what he was talking about in there, and it made sense to me, and so I just jumped straight into this fruitarian diet at that stage. So all I was eating was fruit. I dropped 15 kilos in three months, but I now know that a lot of that was muscle. And then as things would have it, we decided to move from where we were living down to the Gold Coast in Australia. And I was put in, back into a place of working full time, um, traveling to Brisbane every day from the Gold Coast. Uh, so I was basically gone close to 12 hours a day a lot of the time, sometimes more, when I did overtime and into kind of a much more stressful lifestyle. So I was, um, as I said, I was fruitarian for a while, and then I gradually started to introduce some other things back into my diet, which probably weren't so good. So the first things that I started to introduce into my diet were nuts. Obviously I was craving fat. So I would have nuts and I would have lots of nuts, uh, cashews in particular, uh, and peanuts. And then I would have also hot chips <laughs> when we went into town. Um, so that was kind of a weekly thing, at least, was the hot chips that I remember. And then I moved from there kind of gradually just into a full-blown kind of vegan diet. Um, so I was vegan for a couple of years, and then I started to have some cheese and bits and pieces and moved back towards a vegetarian diet. Now, while I was vegan, as I said, I had moved into a more stressful kind of lifestyle again. Um, and so I worked for in Brisbane for a year and then I worked, uh, got a job on the Gold Coast. So there wasn't so much traveling, but the job was way more stressful. Um, and the woman that I was working for made it incredibly stressful. Um, and so I worked there for about a year or so before we shifted back to um, Nanango, where we'd lived the little town where we had our house. Um, and so in that time, from my memory, my anxiety started to really ramp up again uh, and my bowel really started to play up. So my bowel had played up a bit before I quit smoking and started exercising. It had been playing up uh, quite a bit with uh, like IBS, diarrhea kind of symptoms. And then that had kind of settled once I lost the weight and got myself a bit healthy, that had kind of settled. But then with the stress and the vegan diet, the IBS became a thing again. I was back and forth to the toilet all the time. I'd get really anxious and panicky. And as I said, my job was quite stressful. I was um, IT manager for a small recruitment company um, and doing that in training uh, staff. And so I had a lot to kind of deal with. Um, and I remember one of the guys, he was a contractor who used to come in to help me to do stuff sometimes that I didn't know how to do. And he said to me one day, he said, I've never known anyone to go to the toilet as much as you. <laughs> and I I just made out that, you know, I was, um, I drink a lot of tea and I eat a lot of fruit. And so, you know, I've got to go to the toilet, but it wasn't that at all. It was because I had diarrhea or I, I was anxious and it would just make me want to go to the loo. So um, once we shifted back to our house in, in um, Nanango, where we used to live, um, I got another job doing IT with the local council. That wasn't quite as stressful. Uh, the council was a bit of a cruisier place to work. Um, and I, but I was still traveling down to the Gold Coast once a week for about a year or so after we moved back because I was still doing my massage course, which was an evening course. And I was still contracting to my ex-employer and going down and working for her uh, one, one day or a half a day a week. Um, And so I had yeah, gradually moved back towards a vegetarian diet. And so I was vegetarian and having all these bowel issues and stuff um, for about 10 years or so. And my health kind of continued to be a problem. Like there wasn't, as I said, I don't go to doctors. So the only times I went to doctors would be to get some tests done. And I went a couple of times to get thyroid tests done and they would come back kind of borderline normal because all they would test was TSH. But I knew that my thyroid was a problem because I was um, taking my basal body temperature 
um, in the morning when I woke up and it was always low. It would sit around 35 degrees, 35.5. I was always cold. Uh, and so I knew that I had a thyroid problem. Um, and so I was trying to kind of work out how to manage that naturally um, and trying all different things. And we moved back to New Zealand uh, when I was 39. So, oh, I forgot a piece. So I had quit smoking when I was 30, had seven years without cigarettes. When I was 37, I started smoking again. And that was purely, it wasn't a decision, but it was purely because we were doing a lot of socialising, a lot of drinking. Everyone I associated with smoked, including my husband, he was still a smoker. And so I started thinking that I could have a cigarette when I was socialising. And that was a mistake. And so I ended up back smoking for four years. And so in that time, my exercise slowed down. I got, regained uh, some weight, not all of it at all. Uh, my, I've only ever, only ever regained maybe about 20 kilos out of the 45 that I'd put on, that I'd lost initially. Um, and so, um, so yeah, I ended up back on cigarettes and then we shifted back to New Zealand when I was 39. And then I had gained this weight, wasn't doing much exercise, and then I decided I was gonna quit smoking again and start exercising. So quit smoking, joined the gym. It may have been in the other order, I can't remember, um, but I'm pretty sure I joined the gym after I quit smoking. Um, and so joined the gym and got into doing a lot of weight training I was walking and running in the end every day. Uh, I was running six days a week, um, doing a few little triathlons and things, uh, riding my push bike lots, swim training, all that sort of stuff. And in that first year at the gym, I lost no weight. <laughs> I was exercising my butt off. Um, I was, I would, this is what I was doing. I'd get up in the morning, I'd go for a run in the morning. So I might run six to eight kilometers in the morning. And at lunchtime, I'd, cause I was, I'd walk to work because my work was um, about two kilometres from my home. So I'd walk to work in the morning. I was, I was running my business as a massage therapist. Um, I would walk home at lunchtime. The gym was on the way home. So I'd go to the gym at lunchtime. I'd do weight training at the gym. Sometimes I would do another run on the treadmill. Um, and then I would go home, have a quick shower, bite to eat, back to work. So I'd walk back to work again. And then I'd walk home again after work. And then sometimes after work, I'd go to the gym again and I'd do a, a body attack class, Les Mills body attack class. So it was still pretty full on, way too full on. And that was part of the problem I realise now. Um, and so I did my first year at the gym. As I said, I didn't lose any weight at all. I actually gained, I gained muscle and I gained body fat. I was being checked out by the... Um, gym instructor every month, having my body composition measured and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, I was building muscle, but I was also putting on fat and I was trying all different ways of eating. So I, in this time, or it was, yeah, it was in this time while I was at the gym, I think that I started eating meat again because I was trying to work out these health issues and stuff that I had and my thyroid issues. And so I started eating meat again. It was honestly really hard. It was like changing religion for me because I'd been so plant-based and so um, totally in the belief that plants were the healthiest foods, meat wasn't healthy, um, but I'm an O uh, blood type and I had two copies of the Eat For Your Blood Type book I found out when I went looking for it. And when I revisited it, that book, I that's what made me decide to start eating meat again. So when I started eating meat, as I said, I was going to the gym, um, I wasn't running when I started eating the meat, so I was walking every day and had never been able to run. Always just felt like my legs wouldn't, didn't have enough energy in them or something. But when I started eating meat again, all of a sudden I could run. And so I knew that the meat was doing something that was good for me, even though it wasn't really a path that I thought was the kind of the right path to go. It's hard, it's hard to explain because that whole mindset around the plants and the meat being evil thing is a bit of a mind fuck, but um, I could feel difference and I could not get enough meat into me for quite a while. I remember my dad looking horrified at the size of the steak I was eating when we went out for lunch one day, but it was just the way that I was and it definitely made a difference to 
um, my overall health when I started eating it again. So at that first year at the gym, as I said, I, I gained muscle and I gained body fat. Um, and then the second year that I was at the gym, then I started to actually drop a bit of uh, weight on the scales. Not much, it was only a couple of kilos over a year, but my size went down quite a bit. So the body fat went down. So um, I went, I think I dropped down two sizes. I went from a, uh, I think I'd been an 18 and ended up a 12. Oops, just had to plug my phone and my phone was going flat. Um, so I'm gonna just make sure it's turned on. Yep, it is. All right, so um, I'd gone from an 18 down to a 12 but with only a couple of kilos really on the scales that was lost. And then we moved back to Australia. This is a long story, but we moved back to Australia and um, had an incredibly stressful first year back in Australia. We bought a business. We actually bought a gym. I'll tell that story one day. Um, got completely ripped off, ended up closing the doors and walked away. This was in 2008 when the global financial crisis happened. Um, and we ended up, yeah, closing the doors and walking, but we had 12 months with just massive, massive stress. And that affected my health massively. So I didn't realize until later how much impact that was having on me. So two years after we closed the door on that, I think it was, it was 2011. Yeah, 2011, I was diagnosed with um, an overactive thyroid, Graves disease, would not wish that on my worst enemy. Um, did not want to go down the medical route, so decided that, told my doctor I was gonna go and find a way to sort it out myself, which I did. Um, I could have done it with what I know now, I could have done it in a better way, but I managed. What I did was, I did a 78 day juice feast. So I lived on three to four liters of juices, fresh juices, for nearly three months. Now, when I did that, I of course lost some weight um, and I felt really good because I wasn't getting any fiber through my body. Um, so my gut was had a chance to kind of settle down a bit. Um, I hate to think what my blood glucose levels would have been like. Um, I was juicing all sorts of things initially, a lot of fruit, and then as I, time got on, it was more vegetables. Um, and things like beetroot and, and tomatoes and capsicum and all sorts of stuff, cucumbers, lots of things. Um, and But it's it settled my symptoms down. So I didn't get rid of them, but it settled them right down. Uh, when I came off that juice feast, I had a really bad problem uh, for a little bit with my bowel. We, we'd actually come over to New Zealand on holiday and I was so constipated. I've never, ever had that problem before like that. Uh, it was horrific. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. <laughs> it was so bad, but I, I managed to get it sorted. Um, so um, this, I did the juice feast. We were over here on holiday, then we went back to Australia, and I was still having some symptoms. So I would started going to the gym again, but I had to take it really slow because my heart rate would still kick off and do weird things. And I was measuring my blood pressure and my heart rate and that at home, um, a lot and I went through a patch where my blood pressure would be incredibly low like I and my pulse rate my pulse rate resting pulse would sit around 45 beats a minute it was so slow my father said to me you must be really fit and I said no it's not that I was just my body was a mess and so then I um when we got back after we'd been in New Zealand, eventually I was looking more into information, you know, around thyroid stuff and, and everything, and I came across the GAPS diet. And so I read Natasha Campbell McBride's book um, about the GAPS diet, decided to jump into that. And I went, so I, I took her advice and I removed all plants from my diet. So I should have, all of these clues over the years, you know, when I started eating meat again and then with us, I removed all plants from my diet when I started on GAPS and I was making meat broth. And so I was having meat broth for the first little bit and my digestive system just settled down. The diarrhea settled down and it was quite amazing. Um, I then started to introduce, you know, some eggs, and really well cooked vegetables in amongst the bone broth, just a little bit. 
and kind of gradually took it from there and it made a massive difference, settled all the thyroid symptoms down, um, got me back to a place where I could exercise properly again and I continued to make bone broth for um, over two years and had it every single day, even while we were traveling in our camper van with the dust and the flies in Western Australia, I still made bone broth and still had it every day. Um, and or meat broth, one or the other. And so that was all good. But then <laughs> amongst all of that, I had, I, I kept going back to a vegan diet. I kept going back to raw vegan. I'd have patches where I'd go back into it because I still, my belief was still that it was the right way to go. And so, and I was trying to lose weight because I'd regained weight. And, and I kept thinking that, you know, raw had to be better. You know, you watch all the influences and that with all of this stuff. I mean, I was one of them at one point making videos and sharing recipes and all the rest of it, living on smoothies and juices and salads and um, nuts, <laughs> nuts, lots and lots of nuts, um, making raw slices and raw desserts and all that sort of thing. Um, because we were living in Harvey Bay in Queensland, fruit and veg were really cheap. We would go to the markets. There was markets on every weekend and we would go and buy all our produce at the markets. And so I always had a fridge just chocker full of, you know, everything, mangoes and watermelon and papaya and um, cucumbers and tomatoes and capsicum and all spinach and rocket and all of this stuff that was all this, all this produce that was... Just, it was a constant. I used to eat a lot of it and smooth. I'd make smoothies, you know, with all of this stuff in it. And cacao, I used to buy cacao and all of, you know, the chia seeds and the flax seeds and oh, buckwheat and all of this stuff. And so that was, even when I started eating meat and once I got through that initial part of the GAPS diet, all of these foods were a huge part of my diet. And as I said, I'd, I'd venture back into the whole raw vegan thing and stop meat for a little bit. And then I'd come back and it was, and my anxiety was always there and my IBS diarrhea was kind of always there. The only time that it kind of settled down was when I was doing in the, that initial stage of the GAPS diet. But my belief wasn't that animal products were healthy, like that they were, the 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 our, our diet that we should be eating that wasn't my belief and so I kept going the other way and so this time shifting back to New Zealand um, I'm I've got less than a year I'm going to be 60 um, so this has been a long time going through all of this stuff um, we shifted back to New Zealand eight years ago and of course my diet changed when we came back to New Zealand because all of that fresh produce wasn't cheap and it wasn't readily available. So my diet switched more towards um, meat um, a, a fair bit, I guess, um, but lots, still lots of plant material, but more spinach because rocket was more expensive. Um, potatoes and sweet potatoes, so like way more high um, oxalate choices and foods um so potato sweet potato a lot of pumpkin and a lot of roasts like roast vegetables and stuff um but i would also have like for breakfast in the morning i might have buckwheat porridge um so eating a lot more cooked i guess um but still you know still a lot of salads you know like because that's always been a part of my paradigm was that salads were healthy and so we had salads summer and winter um, with pretty much ev pretty much every day. Um, so even if we had a roast, we'd have a salad with it. You know, it was a constant. Um, and of course, lots of nuts and seeds as well. Never did really well with beans, which was fortunate. I went through a little stage here where I was doing the starch diet. I tried that, which of course is a vegan diet, but without fats. Um, I didn't feel good on that. You'll see if you go back in some of my videos, I've got Sue's on Starch was the name of my channel. Um, so yeah, tried that, and then we went vegan again for a little while after watching that Blinken documentary. That um, is it game change? Is it game changers? 
the one that was about the vegans with all the athletes in it. Uh, we watched that. Even my husband went vegan then. Um, and he lost basically all of his muscle. His muscle just fell off him. He lost a heap of weight and muscle. And he was constantly cold. He couldn't get into cold water without feeling like, like he was going to die. We were at the beach one day and he couldn't breathe because he was so cold and just because his whole metabolism just dropped. So um, that was, wasn't was a good diet that, that diet for him. It only took, it was probably three months and he was a mess after being on a vegan diet. So yeah. Um, and so yeah, we tried that and then I decided to do keto. So I'd played with keto a couple of times um decided to give it a good go and get rid of some weight because that was the other thing with, since we've been back in New Zealand I forgot this piece as well was the first after we'd been back in New Zealand for a year we'd been here just over a year and all of a sudden I just whacked on about 15 kilos nothing had changed my diet didn't change nothing had really changed it just went on really fast like that and I didn't realize how much I'd gained because I wasn't weighing myself at the time um but I could feel it and so I gained 15 kilos and then I actually gained more. So um, I went back up over 100 kilos, which I had not been anywhere near there since I was 30 years old, which was quite depressing. Uh, so yeah, decided to try keto. Oh, the part of that, the part of the reason I think for the weight gain was um, that I, my clinic, my rooms in town that I rented for my business were really badly affected with mold. And so I was in there for four and a half years and I eventually realized that the mold was getting me because I developed a cough that I couldn't get rid of, that I still have a little bit of a problem with sometimes. So I'm still, I think I'm still kind of working with um, cleaning up some of that, even though it's been four years since I moved my business home. Um, it took me a long time to get my immune system, over a year, probably 18 months to get my immune system to really kind of um, start working properly again. I kept getting sick all the time, constant colds, flus, this cough. Uh, and I ended up going and having some acupuncture uh, as well as taking things like MMS and bentonite clay and um, different binders, charcoal and stuff to try and help to detox this mold out of my body. Um, so I think I've been reasonably successful with that, but as I said, I think I'm still kind of maybe working with some of that, I'm not really sure, um, but I'm definitely way better than I was. Um, so yeah, went on to keto for a couple of months and then started seeing these doctors talking about carnivore. And my daughter had mentioned the carnivore diet to me probably, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago. And I kind of remember when she mentioned it because she was doing a lot of fasting and fat fasting and that at that stage. And she mentioned carnivore and I was just like, just, Mm, sounds a bit nuts to me so I just dismissed it uh, and then yeah when I was doing keto and I started um, coming across these doctors Paul Saladino was actually the first one that I listened to I, he was being interviewed by um, I can't think of her name she's a keto doctor that I was following and she was interviewing Paul and he was talking about carnivore and I was like mm, sounds interesting so I bought his book and then started listening to all the others like Sean Baker and Dr. Kiltz and, um, and um, oh God, brain's gone blank. Um, but yeah, all the carnival doctors and the carnival influencers. And then I joined the Bella Steak and Butter Gang for a couple of months, but then uh, in her challenge, but then had to quit because my diarrhea was out of control. Um, so yeah, so that's how, that's how I've come this, like this massive journey over 30 years yeah 30 years um to get to where i am now at doing this carnival diet and i have had more results with carnival diet for my gut and my bowel health and my mental health um than anything else has given me um my my history with my anxiety and my panic attacks also actually includes depression depression was a massive part of my life uh right from when i was a teenager so um I've never been to anyone for it, as I said, don't go to doctors. I, with the whole anxiety and the depression stuff, I could never envisage myself going and telling a doctor that I had these problems, and so I didn't. I never even mentioned them to anybody until I ended up with the Graves' disease and realised that thyroid was about speaking, and so I needed to speak and tell, talk about what was going on with me. So then I started telling people that I 
had issues with anxiety, but before that I just used to hide it. Even my husband didn't know. Um, and so, yeah, I, um, I might talk as well. I might talk again one day about why I think that I'm like that and why I kept it all inside. But um, that's another whole big long story. Um, so, so yeah, so that's how I got here. And what I'm feeling is just constant improvement. I've still got a ways to go. It's been, I'm coming up 13 months on Carnival, but I haven't been really strict. Um, I've had patches where I've been really strict. And then other patches where I've included, you know, a bit more plant material. Um, when I had really bad diarrhea, I was having some potato every now and then. And I started having some blueberries because um, to try and help just to put a little bit of fibre into to try and slow that, uh, the diarrhea down, which did seem to help at the time. Um, I still eat some blueberries off and on. Um, and we have a bit of garlic and garlic powder and stuff. And few herbs and things but nothing nothing too major um, at all I'm thinking actually about trying the lion diet I just got to get my head in the right space because I really want to see if any of the foods that I'm still eating are affecting me um, because I'm still still doesn't take much to upset my digestive system and I still have issues with my gums and bits and pieces and just a little bit of vertigo so I'm kind of looking into different things that I think could be could be the cause there, um, but yeah. So that's that's my story. That's um, I've kind of condensed it, even though it's ended up being quite a long video. I've condensed it a bit, um, but that's how I have got to where I am, and I'm now actually starting to drop some weight, which is really cool. Finally, after a year on carnivore, still slow, but I'm picking that if I actually went onto a lion diet. I would notice a big difference because I have a sneaky feeling that egg white may be a problem um, or maybe egg completely, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'll talk about that again an another day as well. Um, so yeah, so that's that's it. If you've got any questions or comments, fire away below. Um, if your story is similar, let me know. And um, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I thank you for watching. If you've made it through this far, you're doing well. Um, and I will talk to you again another day. Bye.